Oh, you spooked me there for a minute, there, friends and family. Glad to have you back here in the little old country kitchen. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, it has. We've been busy. And something we've been busy at in the last few days is processing food. Even with a little bit that I have growing here. My food, I just can't eat it all fresh. Uh, tomatoes, been a tough year growing tomatoes. But I have had an abundance for one person. As well as my beans. Had an abundance of them. Of course, y'all know about blueberries and that. So I've been spending the last hmm, three or four days since couldn't eat it all fresh putting some of that up to enjoy this winter. And you, you're right, just a nick of time. Because we're on the last batch of tomatoes I've been processing. And that. And what I'm, and how I do it is I make stewed tomatoes. Yes. Now, they're called old fashioned. And I, I gotta be honest, I don't see a lot of videos or anything on social media about it anymore. But that's how my family always did it, all the way back to my great grandmother. We didn't make salsa. They'd make what's called stewed tomatoes, uh, crushed tomatoes, they can hold tomatoes, and they'd make sauce, and some juice. They didn't do all the things you see now in the grocery store. Like all those varieties of diced tomatoes and everything? No, didn't do all that. Primarily what they did first was do their stewed tomatoes. And I do it too. And the reason being is those stewed tomatoes can be a base for so many other meals. I use them in my goulash. I use them uh, in my chili. Yep, sure do. I make pasta dishes out of them. Rice dishes. And uh, I'm going to take you along with me, since you're here, you can help on how I do my stewed tomatoes today. And you're going to need a few things, like always. So let me show you what you're going to need, and then we're going to get started. So y'all, just take a seat there in the dining room, and we'll go through this, and I'll let you know what you'll need, in case you decide that you want to do it too. So, what we got here? We got everything we need. Of course, you're going to need some tomatoes. Now, this is about three or four pounds of a variety of tomatoes. We got our Atkinsons here. And we got our Beef Masters right there. You're going to need a green bell pepper, some celery, a couple stalks of celery. You're going to need some onion at least one small to medium and about three to four cloves of garlic as well as some apple cider vinegar salt of course ground black pepper and your spices and this is what I use I use some basil leaves some oregano leaves parsley flakes and some paprika yep now you can use any spices you want this is just what we've used oh I think ever since uh, I started doing this now my mama and my grandmother they didn't use all the spices I use and that because I just didn't have them I mean, Lord, all I remember Mama having on hand was garlic powder, onion powder, poultry seasoning, salt, pepper. May have had a few others. But that was her basic repertoire. And that just didn't happen back in the day. And, of course, you're going to need a crock pot. And what we got here is a three-quart crock pot. And that's important in knowing. So, you know. How much tomatoes you're going to be needing. Now I went ahead and sprayed down this crock pot with some cooking spray. Now if you don't want to use that, 
You could wipe it down with some olive oil, avocado oil, or even butter. Mama used butter. We got that there. You're gonna need a nice lard bowl, and I'll show you why. And also some type large stock pot. Why? Because inside got some water coming up there to boil. Because what we're gonna be doing with that, we're gonna take these here fine looking bunch of tomatoes here. We're gonna X the bottoms. And then, once this pot of water comes to a rolling boil, what we're going to do then is place these tomatoes in that rolling boil in water for about a minute. Or until the peels start to crack and uh, curl up a little. Because that's really going to help in the peeling process. Trust me that. Now, there is another way you could do it. And this is especially if you don't have time to process your tomatoes right away or don't have enough of them. You can take those whole tomatoes right there, just like they are. You can drop them in freezer bags, you stick them in your freezer, and save them up for a while till you got enough to process. Or, you can just put them in there overnight and start this whole process the next morning and take them out, let them thaw, and the skin will slip right off them. Just a little pro tip there. Something I learned totally by accident. So this is everything you're going to need for my version stewed tomatoes so what I'm gonna to have to start doing now while that water's coming up with a boil and I thought Trix was gonna help but uh, she decided to wander it off is I've got to get that there bell pepper diced up get me a couple stalks of celery diced up one of those there small onions and garlic all diced up so we're gonna be doing that while the water comes up to a boil. You'll need some measuring spoons too, by the way. And very sharp knife. And I just spent some quality time with this one, bringing it back up speed. It'll slice paper, so I'm hoping it'll do fine on slicing the bottom of these tomatoes. And then once they come out of the water, I'll be taking these cores out. And that's important. You don't want them cores in there. Trust me, you don't. They're just all hard, no flavor. So let me get to it. And uh, y'all just go down, sit back in the dining room. You know, if you need a cold drink or snack, you just yell out to me. I'll have tricks. Grab you one and bring it on in. Okay, y'all, we're back. And me and old tricks, she helped. She helped old uh, Mr. Tom dice up that uh, one uh, green bell pepper, a couple stalks of celery right here, that one small onion, and four cloves of garlic. I just dumped it on top there. So that's all ready. Ready to go in the crock pot. And then I went ahead and scored the bottoms. These tomatoes. Yep, sure did. So they're ready. They're ready to go right on in here to this nice pot of boiling water. Yep. And we got it sort of at rolling boil, which is important. Now what we're gonna do, and I don't got any other way to do this, so I use tongs. And I'm going to pop these little ones in first. I'm just going to pop them off in there. Sort of look over there at the time. And since I'm going to be continuing to cook these tomatoes, I'm not real concerned about the one minute rule. 
You don't want to put too many in there because you still want to have some boiling action going on. And you're going to leave them in there. Here again. Since we're going to be cooking them over in the crock pot directly. And you're going to put them in there till you see that skin start to crack and peel. Yep. And it will directly. And when that happens, we'll take them out, put them in this bowl, and we're going to start the peeling process and corn process. And then, we got to, you know, cut them up into smaller sections. Now these smaller ones, now part of the quarter of them, these bigger ones, yeah, well, I'm going to have to cut them up to about an inch or so cubes. Now this uh, sort of uh, squirrely looking beef master, that's going to take some carving on it. Of course, i got to core them all out too. So that's where we're at with this. And I hope my lens don't fog up. You can see what we got going on in there. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get this going on. And uh, fish these out. When they're ready, come back. When we're ready to start peeling them up and corn. So y'all, as you can see, we got them uh, finished right on up. And if you can't tell there, those skins are starting to loosen on up, wrinkle on up. Should be easier to get off. We'll hope they are. Now, something I will say, if I was going to be freezing these tomatoes instead of making stewed tomatoes, I would have had an ice bath prepared. And as soon as I got done, I would have dropped them in an ice bath. But that ain't what we're doing. What we're going to be doing is taking them and peeling them. And they're still a little hot. Oh yeah, might need to let them cool some. You can see, skin comes right off. Yes, it does. Look at that. Look at that. You see that? Comes right on off there. Yep. No problem at all. Neat, ain't it? First time I saw that was when my my great grandmother did it. And you know, when you're you know, three, four, five years old and that watching and that still too young to contribute things like that just amaze you especially if you're listening to the adults and that talking see comes right on off there now you're going to get messy if you got some aversion to getting your hands messy, you can wear gloves, of course. Then we got to cut that nasty core out of there. Yep. And these tomatoes are not cooked through. Nope, they're still firm. Not so much on the outside. And we got to get that core out of there. And don't worry about mashing up your tomatoes that. Of course, probably should have did this before I peeled it up there. I'm going to get that nasty old core on out of there. And that. And there we have it. Peeled. Core. And what we're going to do with these size 
in the smaller ones, we're going to quarter these. These larger ones, like I say, you can see how those skins are just slipping right on off there. We're going to take them and probably chunk them up into one inch or so large chunks. So let me get this done because it is nasty. And uh, we'll bring you on back. Ain't hard. Just takes time. So y'all went ahead and decored those tomatoes. Of course we peeled them. And they're in there now. You can see all that juice we got too. Ooh, doggy. Of course, that whole bowl right there is going to go in that crock pot. Yes, it is. Now, occasionally old Mr. Tom has a senior moment, and something been troubling me as I went through this three times. I hadn't been corning them ahead of time. I thought about that while well, they're still nice and firm. But I thought, no, I used to do that after put them in the boiling water. Now I'm thinking, after doing this now a third time, that go ahead and core them before you put them in the boiling water. That's why I'm going to do it next time, of course. If I do, I'll let y'all know, which is what I'm going to do. Because they'd be a bear to core right now, <laughs> even with a super sharp knife you gotta be careful you slice the finger off and this is what we got the aftermath of it this is the peels the cores and those big old uh, beast master tomatoes and that they got rather large cores in them and i'll tell you that just straight up especially those ones that look all sort of grotesque so now, this has got to go in the crock pot. Then we're going to be adding in our veggies. So let me get everything set back up. And we'll continue on with the process. Okay, we're ready to start putting them in that crock pot. Now, what I do is I preheat my crock pot. Yep, sure do. Turn it on high. You know. About 15, 20 minutes before I'm getting ready to use it. And I learned that from my grandma on my daddy's side. She didn't have a crock pot. But she had one of those big roasters. You know. Countertop, tabletop. And uh, they just weren't for roasting. You know, putting chickens in, turkeys, pigeons, whatever. They made stews, soups. All kinds of stuff in those things. They're still available. So, she taught me always preheat it up so you're ready to cook. You know, it's sort of like preheating your oven, you know. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our fine peeled and cored tomatoes along with all that lovely juice. Look at that stuff. And of course, we're going to try not to slop this all over. So we got to clean up the entire kitchen. Of course, after all this food processing is done, that's exactly what we're going to have to do anyway. So we got our tomatoes. We got our juice on in there. So now, we got to make it more better. And to do that, we got to add in some seasoning. And first thing, basil. Basil leaves, not ground basil. Now everybody knows basil enhances the flavor of a tomato. And it is because of that fact that the myth got started that planting basil near tomatoes enhanced the flavor. Trust me. That is just one of those myths that has no basis in fact. It's been studied and debunked way before. There was even something called debunking and fact checking. But 
in cooking tomato dishes, basil is your number one herb to use. So we're going to drop in a teaspoon. Yep. Yeah, buddy. The next thing we're going to pop on in there is some oregano leaves. And some of y'all are probably thinking, well, this is going to be sort of Italian. Well, I guess it is. But it's just going to be more flavorful. Trust me that. And it don't hurt if you're going to be using it for chili or goulash. Well, I'm telling you what, you take a quarter of this out of the freezer, throw it in your goulash with your ground beef and your macaroni. Ooh, it's going to be slap the back of your head good. We're going to take a half a teaspoon and pop that in. You know where people go wrong on cooking these days, they just don't season much. No, they don't. We're also going to take and pop this in half a teaspoon of parsley. Yep. And then, we also got to have some paprika. Yes, sir. We're going to put some of those paprika. And this is ground paprika. Right there. Now, at this point, if you wanted to spice it up a little bit, you could put you some cayenne pepper powder right on in there. You can put in some crushed red pepper. I don't at this point because I'm not sure what I'll be using then. Right now, this is sort of a generic blend. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put me in a quarter teaspoon of that there ground black pepper. Right there. And who doesn't know salt also is a flavor enhancer. Yes, sir. Now, I'm sorry. I am not going to be using none of that there uh, Himalayan salt or even sea salt. I'm going to use me some of this here, just regular old mind in America. Table salt. Non iodized. Half a teaspoon. I'm going to drop that on in there. Okay. And then we got to give it a nice quick stir. And to do that, we're going to use one of our little wood spoons here. And that, and there we have it. Got it going on. So we got our spices in there and everything. But we still got to add a few things. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? Yep. We got all the veggies here. Green bell pepper, celery, onions, and garlic. That all goes in. Yes, sir, buddy. We'll just give her another good stir. And it's ready to go. I'm going to bring you over and show you what we got. Here in a sec. I'm going to do one other thing. Now lastly, 
I'm gonna add in two cups of filtered water. And there we have it. So let me bring you over here. Show you what we got. Oh. Why don't y'all remind me? I almost forgot about the apple cider vinegar. Because this puts the kick in it. And we're going to put in one tablespoon. Right there. Boom. Woo. Now that's going to spike it up too. There we have it. Now, if Trix would have been awake, she'd have reminded me of that. Because I almost forgot. So all we've got to do now is pop a lid on. But let me show you what we've got going on. So there you go, folks. It's all in there. Yep. And even though this is a three quart, we probably only got two quarts in there. And that's fine. That's the last of my tomatoes that I've got. I did keep, you know, a couple in the fridge. Slice on sandwiches. Got another one right here. Plus, I got more coming. Plus, I got a fall crop coming on. So it's not like I ain't going to have more. Now. I know people are going to ask how long this take to cook. And I can give you some generic answer. Like a lot of recipes do. I can say four hours on high. Eight hours on low. But it just ain't that way. What I want you to do. Is what you do is you come in here and you see these hard vegetables like that uh, green bell pepper and those onion ones when they get soft this has been cooked enough and if that happens in two hours on high in your crock pot or five hours on low and that's what you cook it at. If you want the best, it can never be. Now understand, we're going to be putting this up in freezer bags and using it in other recipes later. Now I am going to take some of this tonight and I'm going to top some fine steamed rice with it. And that's going to be my dinner. But the remainder of it will be poured off into freezer bags, put in my freezer, and put up to enjoy this winter. And that's all there is to it. Just put the lid on, clean up, and wait. And when those green bell peppers those onions get tender, turn it off, let cool. When it gets cool, you can go ahead and put it up in freezer bags. Now I know as soon as I say that, I'm going to have some of y'all saying, well you can that. And oh yeah, you can. You can water bath can it. And I've done that in the past a whole lot. But right now, if you're watching this video, we're in the midst of pandemic. And cannon jars are still hard to come by in my area. And if you do find them, they're extremely expensive. I'm not going there. 
I'm going to use my freezer. Now some of y'all say, well, more well, power goes off, Mr. Tom. Yeah, that could be a problem. And that's where preparing for every eventuality comes into play. That's why Mr. Tom has a standby generator. Now it ain't big enough to carry this whole house. But it is big enough to more than carry my freezer, my refrigerator, the lights, and my computer. And push comes shut. That's all I care about. So maybe I, y'all try this. Hope you do. Use it in your uh, favorite recipes. Back thinking about it, I may uh, boil me up some elbow noodles, brown me some ground beef, and use some of this for good luck tonight. All depends on how I feel when it all gets done. But like always, y'all, I hope all of you out there are well and safe with your family and loved ones. Hope you're taking all precautions during these uh, perilous and trying times. And like always, I hope you are praying for our essential workers, our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, our police, our military, and all of us in our little community here on the channel. But God knows, I pray for all of you. And until I see you on the next, time, next video, y'all take care. Stay safe. And God bless you, your families, and loved ones. Goodbye for now. Hey guys. What are you up to? Huh? What are you doing, Spook? Doing okay? Yep. You doing good. Magoo. Good to see you. Well, why weren't you? Why'd you leave the kitchen? Didn't help me out, little buddy. Huh? Hmm. Well, we even got Elrod here. Yep, we do. Elrod, what's wrong? Y'all ready for dinner? Well, let's see what we got on the menu. We got some Perina Nine Lives extra protein, of course. And then we got, look at this, turkey and cheese dinner. You ready for it, Magoo? I know y'all. Well, let me get her put together for you, okay? What do you say, Spook? You say it's going to be good? Come here. You want to say hi to the viewers? Huh? You want to say hi? Oh, look at that. Magoo's jealous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let you down. Here you go, little buddy. Now you're warming up. Aren't you? Oh, Elrod. Big baby. Let me get this going. Got to put together their food. Later, all.